Let's do some geometrical optics with a sphere. Okay, so first diagram of the sphere. So here we've got a big sphere, and we're going to start out thinking of an object outside the sphere. A bunch of light rays will come off, and we're going to go ahead and focus inside the glass sphere itself. We'll turn it into a lens a little later. Um, outside we have index N1, so for air you could just consider that 1. And inside the sphere we have index N2, so if it's a glass sphere, that's 1.5. So the way we work out, you know, where is the light going to focus, is we imagine two rays. Uh, one is going straight from O to I. That's pretty much the optical axis. And then another one comes up at some angle and refracts at the angled surface of the sphere up there, and then it goes back in, and it also reaches I isochronously, okay? So to get started, we have to think about five angles, okay? So the two rays make a triangle, and you've got the, uh, the uh, incident angle, and or I'm sorry, the, the object angle here between these two rays, and the image angle of the two rays coming together. You've got the um, incident angle of the light ray to the normal at the surface, and you've got the transmitted angle, because it refracts at the surface, so these two are not equal. They follow Snell's law. And then phi is just an angle between the point where the light hits the surface following a radius to the center of the sphere. So this image point we're saying is behind the center of the sphere. So that's your angles. So let's start putting them together. What do we know? We know something about theta i, okay? So theta i is um, going to be equal to, let's see, it's, we're going to think about this angle right here. This angle is 90 minus theta i, but it's also 90 minus alpha naught plus phi. Okay? So it's 90 minus theta i because that's, that forms that straight line there, so that has to add up to 180. And then it's 90 minus these two b because um, the difference of those two and this has to be 180. Or when you add those, it has to be 180 because it's a triangle. So basically, we know that theta i equals alpha naught, the um, object angle, plus phi. So there's one triangle to think about. And now we also know something about theta i minus theta t. Okay, so if we imagine what we're going to do here is we're going to think about theta i, but we're going to take this out so that we can think about the full triangle all the way to the alpha i angle, the image angle. Because right? if we were to follow this line and take out some of theta i, basically take out theta t, then you can see that's going to be the one that's at 180 degrees with the ray that goes to the image. Right? So basically we have uh, theta i minus theta t, what's left of theta i, when we take that out, it must be equal to alpha naught plus alpha i. Okay, so that's how we get started um, with this derivation. We're trying to figure out if you have an object here, where does it create an image inside the glass? So you start out with several angles. Okay, now let's say for small angles, Everything we do with lenses is going to be in the paraxial approximation, which means both the angle of the rays always take small angles and they're always close to the axis. So really, if we're going to draw this realistically, almost all the rays would just be looking like they go straight. Okay, so for small angles, we can write uh, Snell's law in a simpler way. We can say n1 theta i, n1 times uh, theta incident equals n2 times theta uh, transmitted. And we're writing theta instead of sine theta because for small angles sine theta equals theta. So we're making an approximation there. And now all we're going to do is rewrite this equation and we're going to substitute for theta t. So we're going to say theta i minus so theta t must be n1 over n2 theta i equals alpha naught plus alpha i. Okay. So now we have, well, we've gotten rid of one angle. Right? Now we have it down to, if you come in at this thing at some alpha i, uh, uh, this is what happens. Uh, now what we want to do is work towards 
really properties just of the sphere. Okay, we don't want to derive something about what happens at a certain specific point or light at a certain specific angle. We want to know what does the sphere do to light from any point or at any angle. So to do that, we need to get rid of theta i. Okay? So we're going to pull theta i out of here. It'll be theta i times 1 minus n1 over n2. But instead of writing theta i, we'll write alpha naught plus phi, because those are properties of the sphere. Okay? And then that is going um, to be equal to still alpha naught plus alpha uh, i, or alpha, the angle from the object angle to the image for that uh, one ray. Okay? So now, we're going to make another approximation. Since, again, the angles are small, we can replace a lot of them with distances. So let's look at all the distances we need to think about. Now, if we're ultimately going to think about a lens, you want to think about the object distance from the object to the front surface of the lens. It's usually called SO. It's positive when it's on the left side of the lens. And we want to think about the image distance. That's usually from the front surface to wherever the image is. We'll call that SI. In this case, for a sphere, R equals the radius of the sphere. And we can define this point and call it H. It's basically the height from the point along the optical axis up to where our ray we're considering hits the surface. There's a bunch of distances, the ones we think about when we figure out what a lens does. And so now we can rewrite um, all of these angles in terms of distances. So let's see. Alpha naught. What is alpha naught? So whenever you have a small angle, you can just say it's equal to the uh, part on the other side, opposite the angle h. And since it's small, you could put it over this distance or this distance. You can put it over really either one, because for a small angle, those are basically the same. So it's going to be h over s naught um, plus phi. And let's see, phi is h over r. So si is too long. It's h over r uh, times 1 minus n1 over n2, fine. Um, equals alpha naught, which we already did, is h over s naught, um, plus alpha i is h over um, si, approximately. All right, so now we want to simplify this. One thing you can do is pull an h, right? So the h's will come out of here, the h's will come out of here, all that stuff will cancel. And then you realize we have, we have to multiply this thing out, right? Foil that. Well, the first term, 1 over s naught times 1, that's just 1 over s naught. And we have a 1 over s naught over here, right? So that goes away, and that times that goes away. So let's see, what's left is uh, minus 1 over s naught times n1 over n2. We still have to have that term. Plus uh, 1 over r, that term minus 1 over r n1 over n2, and that equals 1 over si. Okay, so we got rid of that one with that one. So uh, three terms left here, one term over there. And now let's see, what are we trying to do here? So now we want to keep simplifying things down. And let's see, we want to get all the r's and that stuff. We want to get all sort of the properties of where the object in the image occur, s no, uh, s naught and si on the left, and properties of the lens on the other side. Right? So we'll keep this 1 over si, the image distance, and we'll bring this, um, oh no, I'm sorry, let's uh, multi th multiply through by um, n2. That's what we do, right? Yes, multiply through by n2. And if you do that, you get um, uh, minus n1 over s naught plus n2 over r minus n1 over r equals n2 over s i. That's what we wanted to do. And um, then we bring it over here, and then we pull these things over here. And we get this to this side, we get n1 over s naught 
plus N2 over SI uh, equals, and then these two are left over, 1 over R uh, times N2 minus N1. N2 minus N1 over R. And that basically describes what happens when you create an image at in a spherical interface. And you're creating the image still. We're inside the material. But it tells you if you put your object a certain distance from a sphere with a certain radius, and the index of refraction of the air in the sphere are these values, it'll tell you where the image goes. Okay? Within the limit of paraxial optics for very small angles and for very small heights, it'll image there. It won't be perfect, but the hyperboloid wasn't perfect, and the Cartesian ovoid weren't perfect either. There's lots of approximations. But that's where you start to think about a lens.